Well, hello and welcome to a beautiful morning here in San Diego. And I'm on my way to Kobe's Swap Meet to see if I can find any cool vintage computer stuff. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to Kobe's. Uh, I used to go all the time, but you know, the last few times the selections haven't been that great. But hopefully I can find some cool stuff today. There's really two reasons I go to the Swap Meet. And one is obviously to add to my computer collection. Uh, the other is to see if I can find any stuff to resell. So things I have no need for, but others do, and they're willing to pay money for it. So uh, we'll see if I can find any cool stuff, and uh, I will resume once I arrive at the Swap Meet. So here's some footage I recorded, and I'm just gonna walk you through some of the places that I went and some of the cool stuff that I found along the way. Now swap meets, at least here in California, always seem to have lots of swords and knives and just kind of random weaponry. And Kobe's is no exception, so it has all you need to satisfy your butchering needs. You also have artists that bring their own paintings and drawings, that sort of thing. Uh, this guy has a bunch of drawings, and he was only charging $9, at least for the black and white ones. I thought that was a really good deal, and he did a really good job as well. He's got a lot of you know, famous movie stars and superheroes. He's got some musicians on this side, Kurt Cobain, Jimi Hendrix, Johnny Cash, quite a variety of characters. Here's the first of quite a few video game vendors that we hear today. Uh, there's always video game vendors at Kobe's, but today especially, they really came out and this guy was pretty well organized. You can see he's got all the Nintendo 64 games separated from the Super NES games. And of course, he also had a pretty big NES game library. Most of which I do not own. I'm not exactly a collector, but I still have all the original NES games I had growing up. Would never get rid of those. But you can see he's got a bunch of classics in here. Adventure Island, Super Mario Brothers. It's also got some newer console games, PS2 and Xbox. I believe he also had some Game Boy games. Uh, yeah, I can see them coming up here. And some Atari games. Some classics in there, Atlantis, Defender. There's the Game Boy games over there, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Still at the same vendor, you can see on the back table here, he's got bunch of Xbox 360 and PS3 games. So this is really just a one-stop shop for any console gaming needs that you might have. Uh, he also had some actual consoles. You can see Xbox there, some PlayStations, controllers, Game Cubes, Nintendo 64, got an original NES, the Zapper, and some Sega Genesis's or Genesis. However the hell you say it. Now I don't collect NES games or anything, but I do look out for certain titles. And one of the things I look out for are old games that have Famicom adapters inside. Now if you're not familiar with the history behind that, basically back in December 1985, the American branch of Nintendo was running low on stock because all the kids wanted NES games for Christmas. So they had some Japanese titles shipped over and they just put a Famicom adapter inside so it would work on American Nintendos. And some of these carts have some giveaways that it might have one inside. Want to type your college reports in style? Here's a nice typewriter for you. It's got paper loaded, ready to be typed on. Kobe's is pretty cool because it's got a little rest area with a snack bar and small little restaurant thing going on. It's even got some live music. There's always somebody playing their guitar and singing here. It's not always in English, but hey, for $2 admission, you can't really complain. Sometimes you'll just find a random console lying on a bunch of junk. Of course, the console is probably junk to some people, and who knows, maybe that calculator over there is a valuable collector's item. You'll find piles of old records and even some 8-tracks like this just lying around. Last year I found that Super Mario Brothers watch in a pile just like this, so it's always worth looking through it. 
Never know, you might find something valuable. Ever want to be a deputy sheriff in Custer County, Montana? Here's your chance. Okay, do you guys remember little action figures called Monster Men from like the late 80s, early 90s? I would get them in the little toy vending machines at the grocery store. And these look just like them. But nobody knows what I'm talking about, so please tell me if I'm going crazy. Are those Monster Men? Also, you got some random NES games just lying around. And when you find them sort of in a random spot like this, they're typically a really good deal. I mean, we're talking like 50 cents a dollar max. Here's some Matchbox cars, which are pretty sweet. I remember I used to have some of these growing up too, and the Micro Machines. Probably still have them boxed up somewhere. Yeah, there's really something for everybody at the swap meet. And here's some more NES games. Yeah, there were just tons of these things just scattered everywhere today. I mean, this is like a wet dream for an NES collector. But, unfortunately, I don't really collect them, so. Got some Game Boy games and other stuff over here. Let's see what kind of games we got going on. Batman. I'm Batman. Blaster Master. An underrated classic. Definitely one to check out. And some other random games. Ooh, Millipede. And I still have my original Game Boy Classic. Still play it from time to time. See if there's any games in here I'd like. Pac-Man. Ooh, Bubble Ghost. AVGN, I have a present for you. And here's some more consoles. But uh, this guy actually packaged them together sort of in a bundle, which is actually kind of nice because you got everything that you would need to actually operate the system. And he threw in a couple games and stuff like that. So you got a Game Boy over there. More NES games. Game Boy Color. N64. Some Playstations. Here's some more orphaned consoles. Looking for a good home. Here's some board games. All the classics. And some not so classics. Here's another video game vendor. Uh, these guys are regulars here at Kobe's. So I always sort of stop by just to see what they have if they've updated their selection. Lots of NES games. I apologize for the lesser quality video in this section. My camera ran out of batteries, so I'm using my camera phone. But over here, you got some PS2 games. Lord of the Rings, Hulk. Over here, we have cords for every system in existence. Um, more PS2 games, Wii games, Xbox. Looks like original PlayStation, Sega Genesis, stacks of NES consoles, other miscellaneous consoles, some games, looks like uh, Atari games in there too. More NES games, in case you weren't already satisfied with the supply. And you can see they're demonstrating one of the systems. And some Game Boy games and classic Game Boys. And here was my last stop for the day. And yes, they had more Nintendo games. This guy is actually giving really good deals though. Not all of them give good deals. It's kind of a mixed bag, but that kind of goes with any swap meet I would imagine. The deals can be pretty good though. For example, Nintendo consoles, I saw a range of $10 to $60. But those are sticker prices, and this is a swap meet, so everything is negotiable. So I didn't find any vintage computer equipment that I was looking for, but I picked out a couple games that hopefully have a little present inside. Okay, so after unscrewing these, I kind of got screwed. Yeah, the Gyromite did not have a Famicom adapter. 
sucks. But now I have Gyromite. I guess that's good. Excite Bike. Guess what? Had an adapter. All right. So I can play some Famicom titles. And I do actually own a couple. I have Holy Diver, Soul Brain, Transformers, and a few others I can't think of. But there you go. There's a tour of Kobe's Swap Meet. Thanks for watching.